What if I told you you only needed three lenses to photograph an entire wedding day? It's possible. I do this. And I'm about to show you what I do, how I do it, and which three lenses I use. First up, we're going to start with the widest lens I have, and it is the Sigma 35. It goes to 1.4. It's the perfect lens for wide landscape photos or getting ready photos or a wide shot of the ceremony for big wedding party photos, big family photos. I use this lens all day. It does not leave my camera. I shoot with two cameras. This one is on one of them at all times. I use it for the exit, for wide photos of dancing, night portraits, which I am known for, specifically in my area. And then we have a portrait lens, which I use the 50. So this one I use for bridal details, getting ready, portraits of the bride and groom, detail shots, dancing after the first dance, and sometimes the exit. I never use this lens during the ceremony. It's just too, it's just too vanilla. It, it's not wide. It's not close enough. I either want to be really wide and get all of the epicness where I am, or I want to be really close on their emotions and get all of the happy tears and the smiles and the whatever. I also usually do not use this lens for night portraits or first dances. Because again, on the first dance, I either want to be really wide or really zoomed in. And then we have Big Bartha here. This is the Tamron 70-200. to I got this lens years ago when I just could not find it in my heart to spend $3,000 on a Canon version of this. This thing has not failed me. I love it. It's, it's just as good in my opinion. Um, I should probably do a review just comparing Canon to Tamron. Let me know if you want to see that. I use this lens the least amount because it is so dang heavy. I use it for the ceremony, definitely, and I use it for the first dances. I think that's it. This lens is great for, for getting close up um, on those tears, smiles, you know, all the feels. This is gonna be my workout. Wonder how long I could do this. It, this is actually, this is like over five pounds. I can already see my arms getting toned. <laughs> Honestly, okay, during quarantine, my arms had gotten so flabby and I was like, what's going on? And it's because I'm not shooting because when you're like this, like your arms tone down, tone up. Do you know what I'm saying? Um, and like my first wedding back, I felt it. I need to do this side now. I, when I first started, I thought I needed a whole army of lenses. I started, I just started collecting them. I have a 24 to 70. I have a 50. I have a 35. I have a 105. No. Yeah. Yeah. A 100 macro, a 135, a 7200. I'm sure I have more. I just cannot think of them. And truly, you don't need this exact lens. I used the 51.4 for years and it was perfectly fine. I got great photos with it. I was making six figures already and I finally bit the bullet and just got this one. I love it. I do love this one a little more than the 1.4. A lot more actually. This one is my go-to for pretty much everything. But if you don't have the money to fork over for this lens, it's I think it was $1,600 when I bought it. The 51.4 is $500, I think, and it is definitely a good lens to start with, and you can go far with it. For a 35, I definitely recommend this one. The Canon versions, they look great. I I went back and forth on the 35 and the 24 to 70 even, but I ended up at this one. I'm happy. This isn't my favorite focal length, so I didn't really invest all of my chickens, my eggs, into this basket. It does the job. It does have some weird focus things sometimes, but I haven't really had too many problems. I do have to manually select my focal points if I want something tack sharp. So you can't focus and then recompose and expect to get amazing stuff. Just FYI. And this one, of course, 
I definitely recommend it. I still haven't found it in my heart to spend the extra money for the Canon version when this one works so well. And I only use it for two times of the, the day. Although I will say, if you're worried about Rona, um, this is a good lens to have so you can be far back. I haven't had a problem though. Now, if you're wondering what I use for macro shots, prepare to be wowed. This is my in lieu of a macro filter. I ditched my macro lens years ago and I have been using these little filters here. I have a blog post on how to use these and I will do a video if you would like just to demonstrate. But I typically use the up close 10x or the plus four. <laughs> this one says 10x, this one says plus four. So I use these two. I put them on my 50, just like so. And voila, that is my macro lens. There are some things to know about using these. So I would definitely check out my blog post if this is something you're interested in. If you have a macro lens and you're happy with it, great, just keep doing what you're doing. Mine actually had the autofocus failing on it and I just said, forget it. Moving on to bigger, better things that are actually way cheaper. This whole set right here is $20 or less on Amazon. I'll link it below. Now, if I got to choose a bonus fourth lens to add to your must have lenses, it would be the 85. I have the 1.2, but if I could go back in time and the 1.4 was in existence, I would get the 1.4 just because it focuses faster and it's cheaper. It's always good. And I've only shot at 1.2 uh, a handful of times. One of them was to make my background so blurry that I could paint in flowers. And I honestly don't know, don't remember the rest of the times that I did that. But this lens isn't necessary. It's just wonderful to have during portrait time. I have to admit though, I think I went all of 2019 without using this lens just because I didn't want to change lenses. I didn't want to, didn't have time. Every excuse in the book. But this year I have been a little more diligent about putting it on. I just really love doing couples portraits with my 50. I would not recommend this lens for children. If you're photographing children who move pretty quickly, uh, maybe like a six month old who's not walking yet but if you have moving subjects this is this ain't it so yeah the only time i ever use this lens is in couples portraits but it's beautiful in the bokeh oh the bokeh or bridal portraits oh bridal portraits bouquet this is also really good for detail shots that way you're not up the nose of details anyway i'm just getting off on tangents here so really for weddings, you only need a wide. It could be a 28, a 24, a 35, somewhere in that range. A portrait lens, you could do the 50, you could do the 85. If you're shooting film, 80, I think, is the one film photographers use for portraits. Somewhere in that range, 50 to 85. Even the 100, I've seen people use a macro lens for couples portraits. And then you need a zoom to capture all of the feels and to stay back, honestly, especially during these Rona times. Like I mentioned before, I have two cameras. One of them always has the 35 on it, unless I switch it to the 85. And then my other one either has the 50 or the 70 to 200. And that's it, that's my setup. And it has been working for me for years. Um, but when I first started, I only had a 24 to 70 and 70 to 200. And that was fine, I was making money and people love their photos, so I'm about to I'm about to get deep here. The magic isn't in the lenses, it's in you and how you use your camera and being able to know when things are happening and changing settings and lighting and all of that stuff. You could go out there with your phone, honestly, and take amazing photos. So you don't need all of the red line lenses to be successful or to make enough money to pay your bills or to have good photos. You just need confidence in yourself and the ability to work your camera. So if you're new or starting out or just thinking about downsizing because you were like me and you have so many lenses and so little room in your bag or you're getting the hunchback, 
that we all kind of get after a few years. Um, I hope you found this helpful. Please subscribe to my channel and like this video and turn on notifications and give it a thumbs up and comment below and <laughs> I'm just kidding. But it does help my business when you subscribe and when you interact with my video. So those of you who do that, you're a real one. Thank you. I appreciate it. If you have any questions, let me know. If you have any requests for videos, comment below. And I have my entire flash gear list down below if you're interested. I also included when I use what throughout the wedding day. So check it out. That's all for now. See you next week. Bye. Shoot. Okay, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. What are these things? Lenses? I'm a little hungry. <sighs> I need to do some more. This is my quarantine workout. That doesn't sound good. Okay, okay.